And let's start with the largest of them all in an international portfolio context, and that is Walmart. It's the world's largest retailer by turnover, I think, and probably by profitability and probably even by employees and number of stores, perhaps. Headquartered in Bentonville, Arkansas, that's somewhere in the sort of Mid-South. It used to be a regional player, but it's really gone global in the U.S., as well as internationally, and we'll talk about those operations. Market capitalization is in the big league, $223.1 billion. Price to earnings ratio 15.51, dividend yield of 2.77%. Still 62 or 63% of its turnover, I think, comes from the U.S., but how do you figure these guys? Tremendous operation. Fund enough, it hasn't been around that long, only really since the late 1950s and early 60s, yes. under the aegis of the founder, the late Sam Walton. Yes. So you've got the Walmart stores, you've got uh, a wholesaling operation called Sam's Club, mm -hmm. and it's done exceptionally well. Although in the past 10 years or so, I think what happened is that they saw off a lot of their much weaker competitors. It left the space ra rather open to them, and they got a little bit lazy, I think, in, mm. in the early part of last decade. And now they're making a bit of a resurgence again, mainly because of the sheer physical size of it. You take that turnover, whatever you want to, 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 to describe it as, this is about two-thirds of the size of the South African economy in dollar yeah. terms. It's just yeah. a massive company. And its international operations, as you pointed, they've done very well in Mexico, pretty well in China and Brazil, okay-ish in the UK with their own ASDA, um, but not all that well around the world you know, and here in Africa, they bought their way into buying half of Mass Mart, Mass which we're Mart. not going to talk yes. about today. But they haven't really set the world on fire. No, in they have international haven't. operations. And I mean, they've been in India, and they haven't done particularly well there. Yeah. They they went to Germany, they left Germany. As does a classic case, they went in their in with their size twelve American boots, and they thought they were going to just take <laughs> over and and then really. They've got about a so they bought Asda. They bought Asda Associated Dairies. Okay. Um, if you look at the genesis of the name, but um, they haven't done particularly well. It, it's a good operation, don't get me wrong, but it's half the size of Tesco, which is the, um, the, 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 the leader. Yes. So they've got almost a, what, 12, 13, 14 uh, percent yes. market share. They've done well, but given the sheer physical size and gravitas of Walmart, I think you would have expected them mm. to do an awful lot better. Because what Walmart really perfected was buying and sourcing stuff in China, doing the distribution, doing the... So they're kind of a market leader, yeah. world leader. Let's look at the share price, and then I've got one more question. So there you see it's done okay. That's a five-year chart. But in fact, the all-time high for Walmart is $89, and that was reached back in January 2015. So that actually is the mark that we're seeing there. Yes, that's the all-time high ever. Yep. So not too bad since then. But my one remaining question is the U.S. is the market where the online delivery mechanism is the strongest. You've got FedEx for days. You've got UPS. You can use their own online store. You've got Amazon nipping at their heels. Do you think people are going to stop going to the malls in this future of ours and they'll do more and more of their grocery shopping online? They will. You know, Paul, you're right. The trend is definitely more towards on online. But if you look at the demographic that uh, shops at Walmart, and I've got to be very careful here and be very politically correct. Let's just say it's, it tends to be at the lower end of the social spectrum. The stores are very nice, you know. I've been into one in Texas. Yes. I'm and I, there were very nice people there. There was no yes, one who had okay. their underpants too small. <laughs> there was no one who had a fake hairdo. There was no one Mullets. wearing a leotard yes. that ought not to have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you were walking around with blinkers on as well. So Some nice guy with a Texan accent <laughs> said hello to me. The stores are lovely, and yeah. the if you go to Asda, again, they're, they're nice stores. But again, you have a similar type of, of social demographic there. That demographic isn't necessarily going to be going online in the same way as the middle and upper so end. So you're saying there is a defensive element I think there's a defensive element, yes, I think there is. But it seems like it's an at-market perform. I mean, would you buy them in an international portfolio? No. No, I, I'm not hot on this one. It's a good company, turning around. They're having to contend with deflation in, in many ways in the U.S., but, um, and they're doing it well, but it, I think it's going to be a long haul. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to go with you on that one. Somewhat of a heavy sledding type situation. Yeah. Even though Doug McMillan's done well, we're going to go not hot on that one. Right.